Yo, what's up guys, Nanjiro here, and today I'd like to show you a, uh, <laughs> a little bit of a different game than the usual stuff. This is going to be Dragon, however, this is going to be one of the craziest games I I've been in since this expansion. It's going to be versus Midrange Shadow. Let me go ahead and actually show you guys the deck properly. Okay, so... As you know, for a little bit during this expansion, I thought I could play Dragon without Polyphonic Roar just because the first few days of Ladder, people were playing ridiculously. Well, by ridiculously, I mean like atrociously bad. And most times, I could just, you know, blast them out of the game with the Breath of Solomon or, or like a Bahama, and they would just like concede. However, that's no longer the case, and now you have to actually like do different things, sort of. And, um,. However, there are some matchups in the game where you still require Polyphonic Roar in order to pull you through the game. And one of those matchups is now actually Midrange Shadow. Just because Midrange Shadow, it actually plays similar, simil yeah, similarly to this deck that I played when I played Yu-Gi-Oh! called Mermails, where they had a lot of card draw, a lot of filtering, and they would just like develop a board each turn where if you didn't, where if you didn't answer the board correctly, you could get blown out of the water because they had, because because they would have this card called <laughs> Abyss Megalo, I believe. Um, or sorry, Mermail Abyss Megalo, or, or so something like that. And it's kind of similar to Ektar and what it does in that, like, it it, it generates you a board and then it also like activates your effects as well. Anyway, but yeah. So as a result, I decided to play Polyphonic Roar again. Again, ju just in this list, just because this is one of the lists I use for if I'm trying to like grind people out. But yeah. All right, so on to the game. This game was pretty long. I think I think this was like a twenty-something turn game. Maybe even longer. Alright, so I'm going first, which is good, because if he's an aggressive matchup, then, the, 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 then, I don't, yeah, then I don't mind, but if he is like a slower matchup, then I would have preferred to, to have gone second. I keep Lyriel, and I keep Sybil. Lyriel is a turn 2 play. This this punishes him if he goes turn 1 Skull Beast or turn 1 Goblin. I do get the poly. Having the poly is nice. Alright, so he plays Haunted House here, so now I know he's some kind of like... He, 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 like... <laughs> My friend, my friend Kiri showed me showed me these decks. And I kind of forgot what the deck is, but um, but basically, it uses Haunted House to just like blow up, blow up a bunch of your guys in the same turn and get a whole bunch of and get a whole bunch of ghosts. You can use the ghost, you can use the ghosts for trading, or you can use them for going face. It's really cool, just because it, it's a pretty unique thing that only Shadow can do at the moment. So I do skip turn three, and this is bad because if he has a turn three, then I'm in trouble. Instead, he plays second Haunted House. Now, the important thing is just you know not not letting him get that not letting him get value from this haunted house. So I'm not going to do so, right, so I'm not going to develop Grimnir, and and this is why. If I develop Grimnir, then he can go ahead and he can trade in his Lurching Corpse. Lurching Corpse will go ahead and immediately blow up Grimnir, and he'll get it, and he'll get a free token from it. I I, I don't want to do that. Worse, he can also go ahead and do something crazy like oh play Erd. Lurching Corpse will go ahead and blow up the Grimnir again. I'll still have to deal with, with, with Lurching Corpse because it will come back from the Erd and he'll get a token. I, I, I don't want to fuck with that. No, no thanks. <laughs> so instead, I'm just gonna try to I'm just gonna try to try to wait out as many turns of these haunted houses as I can while trying while trying to avoid taking damage by playing removal spells. Or, or if he doesn't apply pressure, I'll just I'll just, I'll just like keep passing. Alright, now here, he plays the Ten of Night, and, and then this part gets scary. Cause... <laughs> Cause it's gonna be a lot harder to ignore four, uh, to ignore four to six damage on the board. But I do draw Fervor, so I just go for it. If I don't play the Fervor here, I'm never gonna get to play the Fervor, so... I do draw Breath of the Salamander, so now, what I can do is... He's gonna Evo this, and when he does, I can go ahead and go Sybil, then Breath of the Salamander... Er, yeah, Sybil, then Breath of the Salamander, then, then evolve and trade into the 4-4 four, four Lich. Oh 
And this is really good here just because this is going into my turn eight. I'm gonna be at I'm gonna be at at least 14 HP, maybe more. And I can go ahead and slam down Polly. He's almost out of cards, thankfully, too, because he, he has me able, he has me able to pop his guys with um with Demon Eater or Soul Conversion, so this is nice. Alright, so that's 200 passes down. He plays Soul Conversion, kills my Sybil, then plays Cerberus. Again, it's important to remember that right now, most most mid range shadow players aren't playing Phantom Health. They don't need it. Any, they don't really need it anymore. So here, I'm just gonna I'm just go ahead and slam down Polly, just because I know that he's not playing. That he's not playing Phantom Hound. If he is, all right, cool, you got me. All right, now this turn was annoying because he does play the Cowie, but thankfully he plays with the Cowie prematurely. You want you want you always want to develop the Cowie when you. Where you're, you're gonna get to kill something irrelevant, like for example, where you're gonna get to kill an Israfil, or you're gonna get to kill an Arabrus, or you're gonna get to kill a Bahamut. But he's he he played it he played it to kill a Wind Blast Dragon that was gonna probably die for free because it was trading. Now here, I thought about this turn quite a bit. I and I ultimately decided that okay, well, if he has the Ektar here, that's great. If I go ahead and pop everything at once, sure, I'm gonna go ahead and take six damage. But that's going to incentivize him to want to play the Ektar this turn, and when he does, I can blast him out with Grimnir, and that'll be fine. So I go ahead and pop everything. Right. Now you might be thinking, okay, well, what? Wasn't there a way that the, the, the A could pop everything at once? Sadly, no, because 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 of the way that the interactions work. When you declare an attack target, if your target if your target like magically dies during like attack declaration, you you don't get to switch to a different target like because you, you've already you've already made your you've already made your, your attack like your attack declaration and you only get one. So. But yeah, so here he swings first, so I know he's gonna demon eater. This is still fine for me just because my my pol my poly is in play, so eventually I I, I I can try I can try to outgrind him. All right, now here, I should have, I, sh I, I actually should, just should have held on to the Scrimner, I think, and just should have gone for the Poly, or not Poly, uh, I should have just gone for the Oro. However, I I knew he had a Coco and Mimi in hand, and I didn't want to die to something like Coco and Mimi plus like something else. All right, so he plays a third Haunted House here. I'm just like, uh, hello? But it does actually do something important here. It kills my Grimnir, get, gets, him a, gets him a zombie, or not zombie, a ghost, and then he uses the ghost to, tra to, to trade into, into my Windblast Dragon, and now he has a 2-2 two -two and a 5-5, five -five and another ghost, he gets to hit me in the face for one. And he draws two cards too off of that ghost, so, so I got him a lot of value there. And I hear, I draw the second poly, but I'm too weak to play it. If I play it, then I'll die to the Coco Mimi that are, that are still in his hand. I, I think he, I think he might have used the Mimi last turn or something like that. But yeah, like, but, but I'll, still, I'll still die to any like hidden damage he has in hand. Now again, the majority of these, the majority of these lists don't play Grimnir. However, Grimnir is one of those cards that is so good that most times when people net that when people like net deck lists that don't have Grimnir, they just put the Grimnir in anyway. So I, I can't I can't take the chance that okay well he's he might be one of these people, so so here I'm gonna forever. All he did is like start drawing cards again, and then here I'm gonna go ahead and ward up. I could have just played Oro, and that probably would been that probably would have been perfectly fine. However, I wanted to see as many cards as possible just because my hand's looking kind of dry. I can't ever actually play these Oros, and I can't play Tina, because I don't have any more, I don't have any more evolve points. All right, so here he does use the Mimi. All right, so he, so he uses the Ektar for pressure here, because he just saw me use a Grimner, and he knows that there's no way that I'm gonna play Bahamut. And so here, I, I go ahead and play Oro. And and, and and now uh, we're in the fun part because I have Polly in play. It means it means that I automatically have each and every turn eight eight damage from two sources that I can allocate however I want to, and I can clear off at least two things that he plays. 
uh, one one from Windblast Shaggy trading into into it, and then the second from Aura pinging it. The only exceptions in this matchup are stuff like Kaui, Thane, and White King. Oh, and then Actar, of course, too. But he's already played two Actars, so. All right, now here he plays Kaui, and then he also plays the Lurching Corpse. Alright, and then this turn, I, I, I massively, MASSIVELY fuck up. Alright, so... Sometimes, for me as a person, when I get, when I see like a top deck, I, I, I don't know, like, my, my like, IQ kind of turns to like zero for like a good like solid like minute and a half. And, and you're gonna see that here, because what I should have done is trade into Kaui with, with Oro, Oro will go back by hand, Kaui will trigger, Kaui will kill Windbuff Shag, and I'll heal for 5, and I'll put him back to 14, and that's perfectly fine, because then after that I can play Breath of Salamander. However, I just play the Breath of Salamander immediately, and then I lose a die roll, and then he heals for 8, instead of instead of just healing for 5. On top of that, there's also the slight chance that he, that, that like the, that the, that the last, that the last word effects might have, might have fucked him, and that, and I might have, uh, Got lucky, and and Lurch and Corpse would heal, would kill one, that uh, would kill one Blast Dragon. However, I'm pretty sure that's not the case. And yeah, so again, I, I just massive misplay here, and I just I just basically heal him back to full for no reason. Yeah. And here I just have to play out the Dragon Summoners, like. They're basically they're basically just pings and, and um and playing both of them at the same time it, it ups my ability to to correctly kill things now I can now kill I can now kill three things per turn like however additionally it's also a misplay that didn't, that didn't actually play out both of these spurs just so that way I could get better RNG from my um for for, uh, for the lurching corpse uh, for lurching yeah, for the lurching corpse pop but again. I, 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 I don't know, I was, I was just like really in the zone here and, and was just thinking about, okay, how exactly do I not die here? And I, 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 was, I, was, I, was, I was under like a lot of pressure just because he's drawn a lot of, he's drawn a lot of cards from his deck. And while yes, he's already played two Ektar, there's still, there's still a possibility of a third Ektar and there's still the possibility that he can, that he can make a board sticky enough that I'm not going to be able to deal with it. Because again, right now, I, I'm, I'm just kind of like hanging on sort of, like, it's still it's still fairly even in a sense, but I know I now have a long way to go before I can kill him before I can kill him now because I I'm, I'm gonna need I'm gonna need either three one blast dragons to hit face and then finish him off with an aura ping, or I'm just gonna need him to like stop playing cards or something like that so I can win. But yeah, so so again, several different misplays for me there. Don't 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 make those misplays. All right, so here. He plays Zombie Party into Soul Conversion, draws some more cards, then plays Dark Conjure. Now, be because because he killed one of my pings, I can't actually kill anything. I, 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 I'm still back to being able to kill two things per turn. And so this and so this turn, I'm basically on a prayer that he doesn't draw third Actar, or that he doesn't have Grimnir. But here, he does play up the third Actar. And he puts me to two. I go back up to five because of Oro. But then he also does this. Now this is good for me because he's popped everything. I I, I obviously can't, cannot clear this with just with just with just, uh, with just the robber. So here I have to play Bahamut. But this is fine because he's played. He's used all three Actars. He's blown everything up. And, and he's made it so when I drop this Bahamut, it's a full clear. He's probably not. He's probably not gonna expect me to play a Bahamut just because like. This poly has been on the board for like ten turns, something like that, maybe more. Yeah. So I get, so I can drop the Bahamut, turn off my poly, and this is fine because like he's used three hectares, he's used a zombie party, he's used a lot of lurching corpses and whatnot. All right, so here he does he does have the necro the necro assassin, but he's out of cards. Like this is one of the few turns where he hasn't been able to draw where he hasn't been able to draw multiple cards. So here I'm just gonna slam down second Bahamut. And here he plays Zombie Party. 
but that is not enough because I, I see third breath of Simon and I get to go face for 13 and finally end this game. Alright, so a few important things about that matchup. Again, one, me me accidentally healing him. That was a mistake, just be, just because or sorry, a few things. Me accidentally healing him, and then also me not not placing out my guys beforehand to try to get a better RNG roll just to see if my uh to see if my thing will survive although now that I'm thinking about it, that's that's actually a mistake because cat because cow was gonna kill it regardless. But uh but yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed Oh okay. No 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 no. Okay. Alright. Cause one thing I could have done is I could have played out the dudes first, then played Breath of Salamander. Breath of Salamander will will kill Cali, Cali will kill Oro, and then it's a one and three. And so, and if, and if my Windblast Dragon dodges it, then I, then I can hit him for five of the eight that he immediately heals, so he'll only heal for three. So, so he'll still be at fourteen, but I have to do it in, in exactly that order, in, in order in order in order to have a chance to do it at all. Either either play is fine. However, it's important that that you that you like not like give out free things like that because. Give me your opponents things like free turns or free healing or anything like that. Th those are the things that, that can that can and will lose you games. So yeah. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Leave a like if you did. Go ahead and let me know what you think of the midrange shadow versus dragon matchup down in the comments below or on Twitter or, or anything like that. And I'll catch you guys next time. Peace. Thanks for watching.